Hi friends, I'm Brie, welcome to my channel. Today I would like to do a currently reading video. to my channel thank you so much for being here when I do a currently reading video I like to wrap up my most recent reads so basically anything that I've read since my previous wrap up and then I'll talk about what I'm currently reading and then end it off with talking about what I plan to read next so first and foremost I want to mention Hunter's Green by Phyllis A. Whitney this is an older author and I'm really interested in her works I've been slowly making my way through her bibliography and I'm constantly on the prowl for more of her titles I've actually hauled quite a few already but I've been making my way through these with my friend Kate Howe I will leave a link to her channel down below. And this one is so good. This one was published in 1968, literally a year before my mom was born. Phyllis A. Whitney considered herself author of romance, suspense, and mystery. So I'm thinking in today's world, we just call her a romantic suspense author, but she is also at the same time, it's hard to put her in a box because you'll pick up another title by her and it'll like really focus on the suspense aspect. And then you'll pick up the next title and it'll really focus on the romance. In this one, we follow Eve. She is an American who has been married to this Englishman and their marriage just was not working out but they haven't gotten divorced yet and she returns to his English like mansion called Athmore and the story kind of goes from there. It has so many different vibes it's hard to describe like at the beginning of the story it gave me Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier vibes. It kind of gives you like Cinderella slash Alice in Wonderland vibes like it's really hard to describe this book but it is probably my favorite that I've read by her so far. So if you're at a library book sale or at a thrift store or even a used bookshop and you see one of her titles, I highly recommend picking her up. She is really, really good. We're playing for Keeps by Jill Shalvis, which is book seven in the Heartbreaker Bay series. I only have one more in the series left. I'm really sad, but I'm excited to see how that one goes. But this one, I ended up writing this one a four out of five stars. I enjoyed this one just like I have the rest of the series, but I will say that this one was probably the most serious out of the series that I've read so far. So trigger warning for self-harm. The heroine has a history of self-harm and this is just kind of like an opposites attract romance. She's kind of a rough around the edges type of girl. Hero is this big CEO businessman. She calls him Suits and she really underestimates him. Like even though he's this rich guy, he's also got a really good heart and he comes from a really troubled past. I really enjoyed it. So I cannot wait to read the next one. I'm on hold for the audiobook from the library. I am so shocked at how many people have that book checked out at the moment. Black Movie by Donez Smith. This is a poetry collection that I read on Scribe. I highly recommend if you are a Scribe user getting on there and searching through their poetry collection. They have some wonderful, wonderful stuff. This is a poet that I'm definitely rooting for. I cannot wait to read more by him. My Besties X by Piper Rain. I enjoyed this one. I did end up rating it a four out of five stars, but there were just a few things that annoyed me in this book. Like the heroine is Italian and she's like the youngest sister of like three brothers. And I just hate when authors keep reminding you of that like keep bringing it up. I'm the type of reader that like you mention it once or twice and I'm like I got it. So then the more that the story progresses the characters mannerisms and stuff I can be like oh you know she comes from this big Italian family maybe that explains the reason why she enjoys this food so much or this means so much to her but like the constant reminder of like in casual conversations of like oh my brother's this or I'm Italian and I'm just like I got it like I just felt like it was beating me over the head. Really liked how in this one the authors focus more on building up the relationship between the heroine and the hero. You obviously can see the title so you know that like the hero has dated one of her best friends in the past and you really see them build up their relationship so that when everything comes crashing down you are really invested in their relationship. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it and the, the friend like that he used to date like I got where she was coming from with her anger but I also just felt like they could could have written her backstory a little bit stronger. It just sounded like kind of lame. I was reading it and I was like, you have every right to feel some type of way. This is news to you. I would probably initially feel some type of way. I don't know. I just felt like they could have written her a little bit stronger and her anger would have been a little bit more believable. Then I read Giant Days issue number 33. So in this one, Susan and Daisy are both in love with their partner. Their relationships are really progressing and they're doing really well. And so Esther is left to search for roommates 
dates for the next school year because right now Daisy and Susan both have plans to like go with their lovers or whatever. It is really good. I cannot wait to pick up the next issue. It's been a couple of days and I'm definitely missing these stories. Half Past Normal, Love for the Holidays, Valentine's Day number one by Bryn Holland. So if you're new here, I love romance novellas. I do pay for Kindle Unlimited and I do not read on Kindle Unlimited as much as I should. My way of justifying like keeping it is I will just get on there and binge a bunch of novellas and I love romantic comedy novellas. I enjoyed this one. I rated this one a three out of five stars. Follows a girl who comes from a famous family but she prefers to stay out of the spotlight like she's not necessarily famous. She's just famous because of who she is. She's out with one of her homegirls one day and the paparazzi catch them like just doing whatever. Her brother played hockey and and like his old agent or whatever has been like obsessed with her but he's been really like just kind of staying low-key and waiting on her to graduate college. So when like these pictures start popping up all over the internet of the paparazzi like catching her doing whatever, he like swoops in and saves the day and it's like I've always loved you but I'm just waiting for you to graduate college and for her it's like I've always loved you too but you were always so much older than me. It was fine, very like alpha male. That tends to be like a trend in the novellas that I find on Kindle Unlimited. But then I picked up book two. Book two was Sweet Surprise which is by Haven Rose and I loved this one. This one almost got five stars. This one is an interracial romance between Valentina and Micah and Valentina works at her family's like candy shop and Micah comes from this big Russian family. It sounds like they might be like mobsters. His grandmother is like you know I want you to find a girl and start giving me some you know great grandkids and it really seems like his grandmother sets it up. She's like I need you to go to this candy shop and pick up my order. And as soon as he walks into the candy shop he's like has his back turned but he hears Valentina like welcome him you know to the shop and he's like instantly like I gotta see who this voice belongs to. So he turns around and it's like love at first sight and this is their romance. I feel like the author like does not have a photo of herself up but I feel like she must be biracial because the way that she wrote Valentina it just felt so authentic. Valentina's parents are an interracial couple. Her mom is white, her dad is black and her mother's family basically disowned her whenever she chose to marry her Valentina's father and she's just always Valentina's always lived she just talks about how when you're biracial you kind of live with one foot in two different worlds how confusing that can be and then just seeing her parents who absolutely love each other like there's no doubt about it that they love each other but she just always wonders does my mom ever regret choosing my dad over her family because her family like still does not talk to her and so when she meets Micah she's like well I'm a woman of color and you're Russian is your family going to accept me it was so good quarantined with the celebrity who bought me by Jamila Jasper this is a I think it's like 50 page novella I've been really wondering like what kind of stories will we get out of this whole self-isolation and I stumbled upon this one and I was like oh I have to read it basically it follows a woman of color she's 18 years old and she's in the car with her parents and they take her to this big mansion and it's just like in the car all of a sudden her mom's crying she's like what's going on she's on Twitter she's like this big Beyonce stand so she's like tweeting to her like 300,000 followers and then all of a sudden her dad's like yeah um, because we haven't been able to go to work because of the whole self-isolation we sold you so that we could pay for the house and she's like y'all are lying and then out of nowhere here comes these like big guys who get her out of the car and her favorite big pop star his name is Henry Smiles basically he found her on YouTube singing one of his, one of his songs and he's been obsessed with her ever since and I read Empty Clip by Amelia Phillips which is a poetry collection that I read on Scribe. I am definitely in the minority on this one. I rated it at three out of five stars. It's just one of those poetry collections that like was just going over my head. Most of the reviews on it are five star reviews. So if you are into poetry and you're looking for something good definitely check it out. It's just it was not my thing. It deals heavily with violence so I do feel like it is a really important collection. I'll probably go back one day and give it a reread because it just really bothers me. But I did not connect with it but there was just something Thing about it like I am not always a fan of those poems that like you have to reread multiple times to get at that point it just feels like it's too much for me and that was definitely my experience with this collection and then I read As We Lay Forbidden Lust series book one by Aubrey Penn this follows Demi and Grayson they are part of this wedding party and they're all in Miami they spot each other across the room at a club and I just really loved Grayson's confidence like this is by the time they get to the club this is their 
second time like fighting each other across a room type of deal and he just like goes up to her grabs her hand and like he's just like let's go this is our second time seeing each other obviously there's a connection there let's get out of here and the story kind of goes from there but Grayson is married about to leave his wife who like cheated on him but he keeps that little bit of information from Demi there's definitely a cliffhanger at the end and I've already one clicked the next book I am currently making my way through Beach Read by Emily Henry this is all over the place and it is so good I've just I've been in such a really weird reading mood like I want to read but I feel like I want something really specific and every time I sit down and I pick this book up like I am hooked on it it's just like when I sit it down again I'm not always necessarily motivated to pick it back up I am determined to just like sit down tonight and get this one finished and then I want to pick up The Marriage Game by Sarah Desai please correct me if I'm wrong and this follows Layla she is a recruitment consultant and she returns home to San Francisco basically after her life falls apart and her dad owns this like Michelin star restaurant and he gives her the office on top of the restaurant and it sounds like her dad has like low-key been doing some matchmaking because he also offered the office area to this guy named Sam so it sounds like he's going to be close proximity workplace romance maybe some enemies to lovers it sounds like a really really good time so I cannot wait to pick this one up so those are the books that I have recently read as well as what I'm currently reading and what I hope to pick up next let me know down in the comments below what you're reading at the moment and if there's anything that you are excited to get to in the next couple of days I would love to hear thank you so much for watching guys I'll see you in my next video have a great day